guys, have I got something big for you today? I'm going to tell you the world's fastest rolling clincher tyre. And in doing so, I'm going to make a claim and back it up with evidence that I can save you 20 to 40 watts just on your tyre choice. And if you're a strong rider, if you're a strong rider, the typical figure will be 39 watts in tyre choice with that front and rear tyre. Now I know what you're thinking, or oh, another empty claim on YouTube. Give me two minutes to prove the case to you and I guarantee this video will bring you something useful. Now you remember in a previous video we looked at the science of bicycle, wheel and tyre savings. Not just the rolling resistance but also the aero savings. Today I'm back and I'm going to look at tyre choices. So here's my claim. What I'm saying today is I can take the same rider on the same bike with the same wheels in the same environmental conditions, i.e. the same air temperature, same surface, same tyre size, just by swapping out the worst tyre choice for the best tyre choice, I can save you 20, 30 or 40 watts rolling along that road. That is a saving worth making, guys. Let's, let's talk about this in more detail. First, no, the figures are not plucked out of thin air. Yes, I acknowledge that looking at the science of rolling resistance is a complicated area. You know, you've got the air temperature, you've got the surface conditions, you've got the tyre pressure, you've got the rubber compound, you've got the rider weight, i.e. the load on the tyre. All those factors make a big difference. To be honest, it's almost impossible to take lots of bicycle tyres and test them in the real world. There's so many variables that happen on a given day that the, the variance day to day in the environment would tests. mask the differences between tyres. And any difference between any, any one tyre, for well, example, from the same manufacturer, is extremely difficult to tease out. Now what you need is a, is a well set up. all the other factors that go into speed to make any real solid conclusions. I tried roll down tests starting from 10 miles an hour, which is roughly the tipping point at which rolling resistance becomes a greater influence on speed than aero drag. Again, I could see some trends for the outliers, but turns out I'm not a machine, nor is the real you world a laboratory. Roll the drum, which is um, machine monitored so that the exact resistance on that drum is known. And moreover, you need almost unlimited time and enthusiasm to test endless bicycle tires that have come to the market, some of which have disappeared, i.e. they've been discontinued, but many of which are still available. And what we're asking today is, can we tap into that knowledge base and can I present that to you in a way that's useful and valuable for your riding? Well, luckily, Tom Anhalt out of California has done all this work over the last few years. In fact, he's tested almost 100 tire compounds, 100 bike tires in his mini lab and come up with the results and put those results in the public domain. What I'm actually doing today is taking his database, and thanks Tom for doing that absolutely awesome work. I mean, you are a genius to do all this in the background. We're going to take his database, sort it, and I'm going to present it in a simple Excel spreadsheet, which is basically your t optimum tire chooser. What that tire chooser will do is enable you to type in your, your, op your preferred tire size or your preferred manufacturer. And by the way, if you don't have a preferred manufacturer, just type in any into the manufacturer box. Or if there's no preferred tire size, type in any into the size box. That Excel spreadsheet chooser will then look down that massive database and find you the best rolling resistance tire in terms of CRR, the coefficient of rolling resistance. But hang on, it goes further. Put in your weight and put in your riding speed, for example, your typical riding speed over an event. Let's say you're coming up to doing a FTP 20 minute test. Uh, put in your typical predicted speed and it will tell you your exact watts for that tire, i.e. your watts lost going along the road. How much does it take to propel you with that tire? So for example, I can tell you that if you make a bad tire choice, for example, Kendra Caliente, 23, looks good on paper, put it on your bike and try and roll that tire at 40 miles an hour. Okay, a high speed. I admit that's a high speed, but that will take you 100 watts to go along if you're a typical rider with a rider weight of 195 pounds, which happens to be the average weight in the US for a male, 195 pounds. Okay, that's not necessarily the modal mean rider weight for a cyclist. Let's put a rider and bike combination of, let's say, 70 kilos for the rider. Let's say going 40 kilometers an hour or 20, 25 miles an hour. Those losses typically for that Kendra Caliente, 71.9 watts. Compare that to the best tire in the database, you're talking about 32.7 watts. The difference, 39 watts. So here, here, here's the headline, guys. The best choice versus the worst choice. All other factors held the same. Front and rear tire changed, 39 watts in typical rolling resistance. And yes, even the best tire is gonna take 30 to 40 watts to go along on the road. There's no such thing as a tire without rolling resistance unless somebody invents some kind of superconductor at room temperature or a tire with minimal hysteresis. Remember, hysteresis is that deformation of the rubber. 
So when your tire is hitting the road, on a microscopic level, the rubber in the tread is deforming. And on a macroscopic level, the tire is compressing against the air. And when that compression is released, it's pressing back on the road and that is slowing you down imperceptibly. But those, those small effects do genuinely add up. Okay, that's all very interesting, I hear you say, but I haven't yet said, what is the fastest tire? Some of you already know this answer, and this is now being confirmed, not just in Tom and Hall's lab, but also on BicycleRollingResistance.com and several other sites. It's, it's the new Vittoria Open Corsa TLR clincher, which is tubeless ready and comes in one size, 23C. Now that tire was released in September 2015, and it was temporarily withdrawn because they did some tweaking to make it fully tubeless ready. How then is that tire so good? This is worth thinking about. How does a manufacturer make a tire this basically got less than half of the rolling resistance of a same size tire made by another manufacturer. Well, part of the secret's in the sidewall. The sidewall is reinforced, Kevlar reinforced, so there's minimal deformation on that macroscopic level. Secondly, the tread. The tread itself is made of four rubber compounds, depending on which bit is hitting the road. And as you already know, it's graphene injected. There's graphene in there, which apparently reduces the rolling resistance by 40% on its own. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, the actual rubber tread is very, very thin. It's only 1.7 millimeters. That means there's a tiny bit of deformation, a tiny bit of deformation, minimal hysteresis, to use the jargon term. All those things add up at the right pressure to make a tire with absolutely awesome characteristics. And if you don't believe me, have a look at this chart from bicyclerollingresistance.com. This tire has the same rolling resistance at 60 PSI that its competitor has at 100 PSI. That is awesome for rides where you need to reduce your tire pressure to less than 80 PSI. And you remember, we put out this calculator for optimal tire pressure recently. So yes, that Victoria Corsa Open TLR 23 is officially the world's fastest tire. And yet it's a clincher. Who would have thought 10 years ago that a clincher was probably the fastest tire in the mar on the market? Now, the problem with this database, and I'm putting it out for you here as an Excel, you can look on tab two, all the tires tested. There's only a handful of tubular tires tested. So we need more data before I can present you the best database of tubular tires. But for clincher guys, it's all here. Try the chooser, see what you think. What we're doing is presenting you with useful information in the public domain, so you can make up your own mind. That's why the tire chooser helps. Put your own parameters that you want, what's important to you. Personally, I love continental tires. Put in, let's say, continental, and then put in, what's the best 25C tire? A lot of people ask me, okay, I, I don't want a 23C tire. You know, I've got a toroidal brand new aero wheel, which needs a fat tire, which is the best? Out of interest, if that's your question, have a look at the specialized Turbo Cotton 26. If you actually measure that tire, it's around 28, 29 millimeters in width when pumped up. So what that means is, it's actually um, a perfect fit for a lot of those wide latest rims, like those flow rims, or, the, or like those zip cutting edge 808s, 303, 404s. Okay guys, let's have a little look at the new fast fitness tips, clincher tire solver. By tire solver, I mean a decision making aid that will enable you to find the optimal tire for you. Now, I must admit this, this database is not looking at tire weight, it's not really looking at safety issues. What it's looking at is rolling resistance. So. It's choosing a tire that's best for you based on rolling resistance. But if you have a look at, up here at data input, if you enter your weight, uh, enter it in kilos, but it'll tell you the weight in pounds below, that's for you and the bike. And then you can actually specify a preference. For example, you can specify any of these sizes of tires, or you can specify any of these brands of tires. Now, you don't have to type in the whole thing. You can just type in two letters. For example, for Mavic, just type in MA, type enter, and it'll switch to Mavic. So it'll find you the best Mavic tire within your other constraints. So let, let's put it back to 23 and change it to Bontrager. Yeah, you can see there it's finding the RXL Pro Open 23C. Now what it's then doing is looking up the rolling resistance, the coefficient of rolling resistance for, for you. Initially, this is gleaned from the brilliant Tom Anhalt database, i.e. lab conditions on that roller drum. But it's making the correction for outside, and that is why you asked for your weight. And it's heavily determined, of course, by speed. So enter your typical speed in kilometers per hour. There's the conversion to miles per hour. So let's say I'm a slow rider, you know, 25 kph, 15 miles an hour. Obviously the watts I'm going to use on the road to propel that tire is, you know, much less than if I'm going at high speed. And then the calculator will convert the rolling resistance of that tire that you've chosen into watts, into watts. Now, obviously, as I previously explained, the conditions determine the optimal tire pressure and the rolling resistance. First of all, we're assuming you're running all of these tires at the optimal tire pressure. If you want to vary the pressure, look at our um, first tire pressure video here. You can click on it and go directly there. And what I'm showing you here 
is the difference in operating watts to run at that speed, for example 25, under very smooth conditions, for example very smooth newly laid tarmac, slightly rough conditions, um, or very rough conditions, gravel or cobbles let's say, and that's probably a conservative estimate. And at the bottom here this shows you the losses of the tyre you've selected. Um, let's say we change to Continental, big fan of Continental, so type in CO at the top, it'll change it to Continental, the best one. Currently tested supersonic 23C, so that's a 23 similar to the <coughs> Vittoria Corsa Open TLR. It'll tell you what's losses at that speed if you were to choose two tyres of that type as compared to two tyres of the fastest fastest type. Now, let's say you um, aren't convinced by the, the solver, the clincher tyre solver, and you want to look at tubular tyres, which aren't really extensively tested in this database, or you just want to see the primary data for yourself, that's fine. Click on tab two here, it says uh, public data, and you can see Tom Anholt's database sorted in a really nice way. So we've got the tyre type, clincher, tubular, we've got the brand, tyre name, width, measured width, and we've got um, whether he tested it new or slightly used, whether it's currently being distributed, whether he tested it with a latex or butyl tube and his own testing notes. And you can find your own tire if you want to match specifically and read off the CRR there. And you can over type in some versions the CRR here to get a calculation for your own tire. So the bottom line is our Excel Chooser will help you find the right tire for you, whatever your preferences. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying you have to ride with any specific manufacturer. I'm not saying you have to go out and buy that Vittoria tire. Yeah, it's got some issues, maybe with puncture resistance. Our friends at BicycleRollingResistance.com have examined the rolling resistance and the puncture resistance of the tire simultaneously. And puncture resistance, although it's not terrible, yeah, there are better choices out there. You've got to, you've got to ride a tire that's safe, that's suitable for the conditions, and if you're in a race or TT, low rolling resistance. But this information that I'm providing you today, this is gold, guys. This is gold. I'm so grateful to Tom Anholt for bringing this to the public domain, not taking any credit for his work, but this information will help you find the best hire that's possible for your rides.